Although you might think you know how to put on your hat, you might be surprised when you're home alone trying to get ready for your big hat event. Did it go on this way or that way? Why doesn't this fit me right? It looked good when I got it. What's going on today? And as anyone who's ever been running late to a hat event can tell you, you don't want to go down the rabbit hole of all the possible ways a hat can go on your head right before the event. With any luck, you have a photo of the model wearing the hat as it's supposed to be worn, or you ask the salesperson to take a picture of it when you bought it so you know exactly how it's supposed to go on. But in any case, let's talk about some very general ways you can surmise how to put on your hat. If you aren't sure if it's backward or forward, here are some tips to decide. First, is there a visible seam around one of the edges of the hat? If so, that part should most definitely be in the back. A respectable milliner would never create a hat with a seam in the front and the back, so it's very easy to see which way it should go. That's an easy one. Second, is it comfortable worn one way and notably uncomfortable the other? Then wear it the comfortable way. This might seem obvious, but once someone puts it on the wrong, uncomfortable way, a lot of times they just throw in the towel and think, oh, this is one of those kinds of hats. No, try wearing it the other way. Turn it around and see. Good milliners are really smart about the weight and construction of their hats. They want to ensure that they're engineered to stay on and be wearable. By the way, when I talk about a hat being engineered, of course it's designed. But these milliners are also taking into consideration things like balance, symmetry, weight, proportion, and a whole host of technical elements. Something else to note is that about 99% of the time, a hat is designed so that the highest point of the hat hits the highest point in the air. Just another thing to think about when you're home alone trying to figure out how that hat goes on your head. And if the hat has a flare adornment, there's a good chance it's supposed to extend vertically or diagonally as opposed to horizontally. And if you're wondering where should the base of that hat nader lie, it should be flat to your forehead and either dead center or off to the left or the right. I've said it before, I'll say it again, there should be no hair in between the cap and the forehead. This is probably one of the most common mistakes I see at hat events around the world. Just remember what Kate Middleton looks like when she's wearing a hat. It's always flush against her forehead. You never see it plopped atop the crown of her head with her regular hairstyle just existing around the hat. When you've chosen to wear a hat, that hat dictates the look of your head for the whole day. Your hair just exists around it. There are various ways for a hat to be affixed to the head. First, there's the headband atop which a hatinator or a fascinator can sit. That's the easiest to maneuver. You can choose to have your hair completely flushed back and or placed in a ponytail or updo or leave some hair in front of the headband and behind the headband. Second, there's the elastic band. From what I've seen, this is where a lot of people who are not used to wearing hats get stuck and confused. I have seen women actually put that strap underneath their chin and tell me that this is why they don't wear hats, because they strangle them. That is very uncomfortable. These elastic bands are not meant to go underneath your chin. It is not a bonnet. The elastic bands will go under your hair. How does it get situated? All you have to do is put your hair up in a loose ponytail, then slip the hat's elastic band around the bottom of your head. Now you remove the ponytail holder, then pull some of the hair that's closest to your face in front of the elastic band. Voila, the hat is on your head. Now you just need to adjust the cap on your forehead. At this point, you can decide whether to do an updo or just leave it down. And more on that in the next video. There are other means by which a hat can affix to the head. One being a little tiny comb. These are best attached to the hair by teasing the hair to rough it up a little bit and make it grabbable by the comb. And then this comb is just pushed into the teased hair. Sometimes this comb is actually a secondary means of attachment, along with a headband or the aforementioned elastic band. Sometimes you'll get a hybrid. I've seen my share of wire headbands that are connected from one side to the other with an elastic band. And this may look complicated and intimidating, but you can do it. Just follow the steps I just outlined for you in regards to the elastic band situation. You can do the loose ponytail, affix it around your head, and then situate it. There is one more less prevalent but interesting hat affixer, and it's sort of like a bar. Imagine two or three pipe cleaners connected together, sticking out from under a hat's base. That's sort of what it looks like. In this case, just bobby pin those pipe cleaners 
to your hair and then pull out the hair from the middle to cover them. It might sound tricky, but it gives the illusion of a hat just floating on top of your head. In fact, I wish more hats were attached this way. If you ever come across it, you'll see what I mean. Don't get frustrated. Hats are supposed to be fun, and they are. If you have any questions, visit my website at chapeau.com, look at my style guide, and you can send me a message directly about your specific circumstance. I'm sure I can help. Next, we'll talk about what to wear to the Kentucky Derby, so stay tuned. And be sure to visit my boutique, chapeau.com, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more fashion tips.